Welcome to Castle of Paint. My name is Ian and today we're painting the goat. My goal right now is to do one video a month, giving myself time to paint properly and learn from the process. Whether I'm slacking, life, terrain for legions of Imperialis, armies for the old world and conquest just keep eating my time. I plan to paint this big boy from Big Child Creative, a super cool 75mm Barbarian display mini, a departure from the gaming miniatures of my most recent videos. However, I do not really have time to do this mini justice, so I'm going to split the difference and paint a model from Warhammer Age of Sigmar or even Warhammer Old World from Games Workshop. This Beastman Beast Lord, the best goat there is, and paint him on a display plane. Before I can play with light sources, I need to build the mini and get him on a display plane. I 3D printed this cube for him to stand on, but because it was FDM printed there are visible layer lines. To smooth this all out, I take wood filler, mix in a bit of water and paint it onto our cube lad. With this dry, I sand it using progressively finer grit levels of sandpaper. Then we give it a black spray. Once it's sprayed, I can normally see the imperfections on the surface. So I apply more wood filler and repeat the process until it looks as I want. With the plinth looking decent, it's time to build at the base for our boy. I scratch the base of a scalpel to make a surface that is better for things to adhere to. Then it's time for a cork tower, or at least a small cork hill. I tear up some bits of cork and superglue it to the base. I'm trying to make these irregular, with no clear pattern, so it mirrors nature more. Next, I mix up some milliput and start to apply to the edges between the cork layers or the cork and the base. I do this to try and blend things together, making it look less like just cork and more like a rocky outcrop. Once that is dried, I take some tin foil, scrunch it up into a little ball, and push it into the milliput. Tin foil like this has an irregular texture, and so when I push it into the not quite dry milliput, it makes some cool textures. To finish off the base, I add some water to a Vallejo texture base paste and apply it over the rest of the base top of the plinth. Then I take some cat litter, small bits of cork, and some teeny tiny gravel, throwing it all over the base and pushing it down so it sticks. To give it a bit of flair, I add some green moss stuff I grabbed from a hobby store, looks like fallen branches, and some super small leaves from Green Stuff World. Then to keep all this from running away, I mix up some PVA glue, water, and a drop of washing up liquid, and apply it all over the base. This should seal things in and stop the smaller rocks or gravel from being pulled off when I paint these later. I add the washing up liquid as it's supposed to break the surface tension and allow the white glue mix to drop into the recesses from capillary action. I'm not 100% sure this is working as it should. Right, a black spray and it's time to talk about light sources. I've been playing around with light sources a lot recently, mostly for speed painting, but we won't be doing that here. I still want to have a very strong shadow colour and some very strong base colours that I can use to tie everything together later. You can see here I am shining my little lights from different angles, trying to get an idea of what will be bright and what will be in shadow. I also try out some different colours just to see what vibe I maybe want. Once I have an idea of where I want my light to be come from, on this mini I think from the right side where his weapon is raised to the sky and at like a sharp angle. I then take some pictures to refer to later. Sometimes I forget about these, so when I go through the paint job I'll have them up on a screen next to me so I can refer back to them at every step. Before the airbrush comes out and I lay down those base tones, I mask off the bottom of the plinth so I don't get any overspray there. My light sources are chosen, so now it's time to throw colours on this hairy man. I start by airbrushing a very dark purple Vallejo model air hexed lynchin. It's so dark that I do a number of coats to try and make it look purple purple. I do this so that my base colours are not just pure black, however the black will save me from any bits that I miss. This purple didn't work. So I switched to a lighter Vallejo model colour royal purple, but still dark enough purple and sprayed it everywhere. With this done, it's time to do some directional light. I start with the rear of the miniature, where my secondary kind of shadow colour will be. I take Vallejo game colour, gory red, and spray it from the angle I chose earlier. I think maybe I will use this to give the vibe there is something burning behind our beast lord, maybe the village he just pillaged. Now I want to go from the front of the miniature, our normal light source. Here I decide to use blue. It works well with the purple and red, and can kind of be set to be reflective of the sky. Maybe? Colours. How do they work? 
I take Vallejo model color Prussian blue and paint it from the front side angle I took pictures of. Also throwing this over most of the base that hasn't been hit with the red. After a decent coat of this blue, I put a drop of ice yellow into the blue still in the airbrush. Mix it up and spray again from my light angle. With all these colors added to the piece, the airbrushing is done. Next is the second most messy step, dry brushing. For the base of the front of the miniature, I take Vallejo game color charred brown and dry brush pretty heavily over all the little rocks and tufts. Then I do another dry brush with Vallejo model color burnt umber. For the rear of the model, I don't just dry brush the base, but also the back of the mini that is red. In the end, the whole back part will keep this color, so I want to build up some contrast. I take the gory red color I used in the airbrush and add small amounts of Vallejo game color gold yellow. After a first pass, I add a bit more and then a bit more. The final dry brush has a teeny, tiny bit of ice yellow added to the mix. Dry brushing done, let's start to build up the section of the mini so it looks like I didn't phone it in. Matching my plane with light from earlier, I leave the blue in the recesses. The blue is our shadow, tying everything together, so I don't want to go back and redo the shadows afterwards. For the metal, I use Vallejo Metal Color Exhaust Manifold, painted on its axe heads, skirt armor, and helmet. For the leather, I toy a lot with the colors I have available, but in the end, chose Vallejo Model Color Red Leather. This is a pretty bright color to use as a base tone, but I really like how it looks. This is added to his little bag on his waist and any straps I can find. For his skin, I use Vallejo Model Color US Field Drab. I really like these yellowy brown tones. For this, I consider painting his legs, but mostly it's the arm and bare chest. This is always good practice painting muscles. As Squidmar says, you don't want to make them look like tiny little islands. For the fur and hair, I paint on Vallejo Game Color Charred Brown. A dark brown like this is so useful and can be taken in many ways from here. For the loincloth and the fabric on his helmet, I want to paint it red. So I put on Citadel Galvorback Red. This will help when I build it up to a bright red later. Finally, I paint the bone and horn sections. For these, I use Citadel Bane Blade Brown, a pretty neutral tone. Okay, now it's dot time. In recent times, I've been playing with adding textures, little scratches and the like. There was one mini I did where I used stippling on her skin, and I was super happy with how that turned out. So today, we're going full stipple. I start with the skin. I take the previous tone, Vallejo Model Color US Field Drab, and mix it in with a highlight color. Normally, I would use Ice Yellow for this. I use Ice Yellow so often my wife makes jokes about it. However, this time I use Vallejo model color yellow green. I want to find more of these colors to use as mixes in the future. Maybe a red next time. Once I have my mix, I slowly add tiny dots to the skin. After a bit, I add more dots. Then add more highlight colors to the mix and more dots. The dots continue as the color gets brighter. Towards the end of the process for the skin, I start to add in some ice yellow too. And once again, add those dots. I like the way this ended up. So let's keep going with those dots. For the red, I take my Galvorback red and mix in the Vallejo model color flat red. Then I get to apply in dots. I'm still applying these to the areas where brighter light would hit, and I want to show up more. I keep adding more flat red to the mix, keep adding dots. Then I start to add a small amount of Vallejo game color gold yellow, and add more dots. As we go higher in the color space, I put less and less dots. Now the dot process is defined. It's just a case of doing this for everything else. Same process, different colors. Instead of re-repeating myself for six other sections, let's read some Beastman lore. A beast lord, called a Churgor in the beast tongue, is the strongest leader of a Beastman tribe who rules over it as an absolute tyrant. All beast lords are large, hairy, muscle-bound brutes possessed of a raw and savage might that far outshadows the rest of their savage kin. Beast Lords carry themselves with swaggering confidence, reveling in their own superiority over lesser beasts. Their thick, hairy skulls are crowned with magnificent sets of horns, as sharp and as hard as any blade, and their robust and heavy thewed bodies are covered with scar tissue and crudely rendered tattoos. Many of these Beastmen champions bear a ward or mark of chaos, setting them apart from the rest of the herd. The threat of violence is implicit in their every gesture. A beast lord commands such an impressive aura that he commands not one, but several warherds under his command. For it is a common ritual for all wargoers to compete with each other in deadly duels to see who shall lead the herd on the warpath. When battle is joined, the beast lord leads the warherd from the front, usually accompanied by a retinue of his most vicious bestigords. Experts in single combat, they seek out the leaders of the enemy armies, 
taking brutal satisfaction in smashing the warriors of lesser races into the dirt, and taking their heads as grisly trophies. By slaying the leaders of the foe, the Beast Lords not only proved their supremacy over the civilized peoples, but also gained the notice of the Dark Gods themselves. Doesn't he sound like a lovely chap? All the laders built up, it's time for some final bits. Off camera, I do the eyes. It's super hard to get the shot right when I do this, and just white paint, black dot, move on with our lives. For the sections of the mini that are still purple, having been missed by the blue spray and red spray, I get some Vallejo model color blue violet, and do more stippling. This is just to give them a bit of depth or contrast and not make them look like they've been left behind. I also apply this purple to the skin just to add some variation. Skin is very rarely one color, and so I lightly add the purple. However, it goes a bit too far, and I bring it back with some ice yellow. I feel like the fiery back of the mini was missing something too, so I took my Vallejo model color gold yellow and stippled on very lightly the areas I would edge highlight in a normal paint job. This just pushes the contrast a bit more, again making it look like I paid attention to the back, and everything was done on purpose. With most of the work done, it's time to push the contrast and also hopefully blend things together a bit. To do this, I'm doing a simple oil wash, but two of them, one for the front and one for the back. Before I throw those oils on, the mini gets a gloss varnish. This is supposed to help with removing surface tension and go get some tasty cappy capillary action, making the washes go into the recesses more. For the front, I use Abtalunt Smoke and Faded Navy Blue. For the red, I use Smoke again, but this time mix it with warm red. I apply both of these washes and then leave it overnight. Quick note about oil wash. I'm still new to this and I think it makes it look better, but I sometimes feel like I'm overzealous with the removal and then it just wastes my time. I take a small makeup sponge thingy and try to remove the paint with no white spirit at all. Since we have a lot of shadow or red light, I leave all of that alone. I'm only concerned about the bits where we did all the layers and highlights. For any bits where the oils didn't come off, I then add a tiny bit of white spirit and do it again. As I said before, I want to be careful I don't take too much away and make the process redundant. With the oils removed, we get a really good looking mini. A very few small touches and we can call this guy done. First off, I remove the masking tape around the base. I didn't really get a very good clean surface with my post-processing for the FDM print. Since I started this project, I have a new or better way to smooth it down, so hopefully next time it'll work better. To try and remedy this, I take a sponge and some Vallejo model color German grey and sponge wet with the plinth. I then do this with some charred brown and then finally with a tiny teeny bit of Vallejo model color neutral grey. This was too bright, so I paint on a thin down layer of contrast black Templar to put it all together and tone it down. The broken and worn plinth fits the theme of the Beastmen, so I feel like it's not too drastic and helps cover my mistakes. I decided to do some super specific placement of some final highlights. I use all the mixes I made before, but then I add some white grey to them, and at the very, very edges of each bit. I feel like this boosts the contrast just that extra little bit. Next, I add some grass tufts. I don't do any on the back, as they won't match with the red fiery look there, but on the front, I can go to Tuft City. Finally, the entire piece gets a matte varnish. Time to lead our warheads into battle and show off their lord! Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoy seeing this come to life. 
I think next time I should not just do dots, but also scratches. What a time to be alive. Stay tuned for more and to delve deeper into what we are doing here, head over to castlepaint.com.